Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to our public hearing here on the um, two guides to licensing assessments. Um, this is part of a, a consultation, as you know, and we will introduce you to um, the main content of the two guides um, first here this afternoon and then, of course, we are um, at your disposal for questions. So, um, Sofia Toscano Rico, uh, head of the authorization division, and Eric Smits, principal supervisor in the very same division, will first talk about the um, general licensing guide. And afterwards, Giacomo, um, Giacomo Caviglia, head of the supervisory um, oversight division, and um, Tamana Taluptea, principal supervisor in the very same division, will speak about the, um, the fintech guide, so to speak, so the licensing for fintech companies. Just to remind you, this, um, uh, this hearing is, is webcast and is live on the web, and you can watch it again afterwards on our website. So without further ado, Sophia. Thank you both. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome from my side also to this public hearing on uh, licensing uh, assessments. Um, to give you a bit of a background, I would uh, uh, start with a brief presentation. You have the, the, the handouts uh, with you. Um, and then the main purpose uh, of today is really to collect uh, your questions, try to clarify any uh, issues that are not uh, so clear uh, for you. Uh, so we will give time for, 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 for your questions after this presentation. Um, the main purpose of the consultation from the ECB side uh, is really to collect uh, feedback and input. Um, uh, if we can still improve this guide, we will uh, do it, so we will take into account all uh, your comments. Um, and the main purpose of the guide is to uh, harmonize, to try to increase the harmonization on the implementation of the authorization assessment criteria across the 19 uh, SSM uh, member states. And this uh, with, the main, with the main aim of achieving a common supervisory practice and increase also the transparency so that applicants know what is expected from our side when they submit an application for a license uh, decision. Um, the ECB, um, since uh, November 2014, has the the task to uh, ensure that all entrants to the banking market are robust and uh, comply with national and European criteria. And this applies both to uh, significant institutions or less significant institutions. And the ECB does this in very close cooperation with the national competent authorities. In these two guides, what we are trying to do is to provide uh, general guidance on what the applicants for, for, for a banking license or for an extension of a license need to, to provide. And then in the FinTech guide, we give some specific gui guidance taking into account the specific business model of these types of, of, of banks. Um, and that's why we have two guides and uh, Giacomo will then guide you a bit through the, the FinTech uh, guide. If we move to the next slide, so slide four, um, what we have here is a bit of a background of the legal framework that is applicable to these uh, procedures. Um, you, you can see here the SSM uh, uh, regulation, which grants the competence for the, to the ECB to, to decide on these type of procedures. The SSM framework regulation that goes a bit into more, more delay, detail and de elaborates on the specific roles of the ECB and the national competent authorities. The CRD4 that gives us the legal European uh, background uh, regulation that is then transposed into um, each member state's national law. The ECB needs always to apply national law, and we all know that uh, the CRD4 in this area is a minimum harmonization directive, so we do have some um, diversity in the way that member states um, transposed this uh, area into their national uh, law. So the ECB also needs to look at national law. Uh, we also have the EBA technical standards uh, published uh, recently that give us info, uh, guidance on what is the information that needs to be submitted to the supervisors 
to uh, start and, and to have a complete application form on these uh, matters. And then uh, the SSM policies, practices and processes come in, and that's what we are trying to make more transparent through this guide. Um, and to, uh, we are trying to ensure that all uh, member states follow the same interpretation of the regulation and apply the same assessment processes. Of course, um, each case is a, a case. Any assessment is done on a case-by-case -case basis. So what we have here is just guidance on the assessment process and what, and on what is expected. If you move to the following slide, you have the main areas of attention in, that we focus in any application for a licensing decision. Uh, and I would uh, give particular emphasis to the program of operations, uh, including the business model, the structure, organization, and the capital and liquidity, just to let you know that more specific guidance will be given on these areas in terms of general uh, uh, licensing uh, guidance. So uh, another consultation process will, will come soon uh, with more specific guidance on these areas. For today, I would focus on the uh, two other criteria, the suitability of management and suitability of, of the shareholders. We will give you also some feedback on the process, um, as well as on the background um, of what uh, can be considered in the scope for the licensing procedures. Moving to slide six, in going a bit into more detail on these areas. So the guide gives uh, specific guidance on what is considered a credit institution, and we do it by going into the different terms uh, of the definition of a credit institution. Um, and it's important to note that it, it, uh, we, when we look in, at an application, we ensure that um, the application fulfills with all these components, not only from a theoretical perspective, but that indeed the, the bank will develop these uh, activities. We also are giving now uh, guidance on what are the situations where an ECB license is needed. And we have it whenever we have a new bank uh, from scratch, but also in some member states where the, we don't have a universal banking license and that the, the license is given for specific uh, activities. And whenever the bank wants to um, perform additional activities, it might require an extension of a license, so the, the licensing process is also triggered. And then we have the case of the changes of licenses, which is very specific and we only have it in some uh, member states, but that applies when we have some uh, changes in the legal structure or in conditions of, of, of the license. Moving forward to slide seven, uh, and focusing on the management body uh, members. Uh, now we assess the fitness and propriety of the management bodies both in their supervisory function and executive uh, function. In this assessment, we mainly follow uh, the criteria and the, the guidance that is in the ECB Fit and Proper Assessment Guide that is uh, already published. We have a proportionate uh, approach. Um, for example, when we have a, a license extension where the board members were already assessed, we do not assess them again. We would only focus the assessment on the additional board members that come in, if any, uh, at that stage. And also the particular case of the bridge banks, um, if uh, the urgency to grant the license for a bridge bank so demands, we can also waive the assessment of the fit and proper at that stage and do it uh, later. In what regards shareholders, we look at the reputation uh, of the shareholders, their financial soundness, and also the lack of anti-money laundering and terrorism finance that could be in any way uh, associated. Um, on the reputation, um, of course, the assessment is not proportionate. We, we will go into detail when we have any kind of, of, of issues. Um, and we usually do not reassess the shareholders if they don't change in, in the case of an extension of, of license, unless there are new facts that would uh, trigger this uh, reassessment. 
and I would move to the last uh, slide of this part of the presentation, where we um, focus a bit more on the process. So the guide uh, gives also a bit of guidance on what is the, pro the process to be, to be followed. Um, one of the most relevant things uh, for you is that the entry point continues to be the national competent authority, so any application, any formal application should be submitted to the national competent authority. But the ECB strongly encourages that before sending the formal application, the, um, uh, there, there is an engagement in a, what we call a pre-application phase. So if there is an intention to um, create a new bank or to um, start a new line of activities, um, you should approach uh, both the national uh, regulators or ECB um, and explain us what is your uh, project. This pre-application phase, it's important to set up also the expectations, to try to have a, an understanding on what could be the, the timeline, what will be the elements that are required to ensure that you submit a complete and well uh, granted uh, application that then ensures also a faster assessment process. Um, because what we see, um, and we will talk about that on the, what is the expected time for a decision, what we see that impacts the most on the um, assessing time is indeed the completeness and the, the, um, the adequateness of the information that is, that is provided uh, from the applicants. Um, the average um, assessment time for licensing um, would go from six uh, to 12 months. So 12 months is usually the maximum time um, that uh, the assessment uh, could take. But of course, this can vary according to national law and we would need to follow the timeline that is provided in national law. Um, and uh, just very briefly, in the end, the decision could be either a positive, a negative, or a decision with conditions or uh, obligations. And we always ensure a due and fair process, uh, giving also always feedback to the applicant on how the assessment process is, uh, is uh, ongoing. I would give the floor then to Giacomo to guide us through the, the FinTech Guide. Thank you, Sofia. FinTech Guide. Um, let me start uh, giving you some uh, background on the rationale behind the the decision by the ECB to prepare a specific uh, FinTech guide on the, on the, regarding the assessment of uh, licensing applications. Now, they needed to have uh, a common supervisory approach uh, um, for the assessment of these institutions comes from uh, the recent observation of an increasing trend uh, in applications from uh, FinTech uh, banks. The underlying objective uh, of this initiative uh, is to promote uh, innovation and efficiency in the banking industry, uh, while at the same time contributing to the safety and soundness of the banking system uh, in the context of the rapid uh, technological uh, change. So fintech institutions uh, with, uh, with their, own, their own risk uh, profile need to, uh, to be properly authorized as any other, uh, other bank. And uh, equally, they, have, they are requested to put in place uh, basically risk control frameworks uh, that uh, can anticipate, uh, uh, understand, and respond to the risk arising uh, in their field of, uh, of operations. The FinTech Guide fosters then a common, uh, a common approach uh, for the assessment of these institutions, including also their own uh, risk profile uh, from the start of the application process. With the publication of the FinTech Guide and the public consultation, of course, the ECB provides uh, transparency uh, of requirements to applicants and also, of course, uh, increase uh, uh, also their understanding of the procedure and the criteria applied during the process. So uh, we can say, therefore, that the transparency is intended in this case also to facilitate uh, to the extent possible the application process. Now, moving to slide uh, 10. Um, what do we mean by fintech? Uh, for the purpose of this guide, uh, the ECB has made use of a pragmatic definition of, uh, of fintech, also based on a concept already elaborated by the Financial Stability Board. So fintech is indeed defined by the ECB as a business model in which the production and delivery of banking products and services 
are based on technological enabled innovation. This broad uh, uh, concept uh, uh, is able to capture actually the different uh, activities, the wide range of activities uh, conducted by the credit institutions in the different countries uh, of, the, of the euro area and also allows to, uh, let's say, to capture both existing uh, banks that evolve and uh, integrate technological innovation, but also fintech banks that are new market uh, uh, participants. Uh, let me say that what is uh, worth highlighting here, uh, uh, mentioning, is that uh, the policies included in the FinTech uh, guide are not exclusively applicable to FinTech institutions and may equally be relevant to the assessment uh, uh, or considered to be relevant for the assessment of banks with more uh, traditional business models. On slide uh, 11, let me say that uh, the supervisory consideration included uh, in, uh, in the FinTech Guide should be read uh, in uh, conjunction and in accordance with ACB general licensing policies and methodology. So the guide on, the guide on FinTech does not change at all the, uh, the general policy. Uh, on the contrary, uh, it ends up complementing the general policy, providing further uh, indications uh, related to the specificities of, the, of these institutions uh, to the uh, supervisor authorities. Uh, and that's also the reason why the structure of the FinTech guide uh, uh, reflects uh, the same uh, structure and the same supervisory areas assessed as part of uh, any uh, new license application. Now, going through the, in slide uh, 12, uh, going through the specific areas of attention in the FinTech uh, licensing process, uh, let me briefly mention in the area of governance uh, the, uh, the suitability of the members of the, of the management body of fintech institutions. Given the specific nature of these institutions uh, and the material uh, technology support uh, needed uh, uh, to support their activity, of course the members of the body, of the management body of these uh, institutions should have a, a quite deep and, um, knowledge and technical expertise and experience in uh, technology. Of course uh, this is done, uh, this, uh, this is needed in order to understand the risks uh, that are uh, in the business model of these institutions. However, um, what I can say is that uh, a common feature that we often observe in, uh, in fintech applicants is that uh, there is uh, uh, mostly focus on these uh, technological aspects uh, and uh, less attention on the banking and financial knowledge. Therefore, there is a need that during the licensing process to spend uh, a lot of attention by the supervisor authorities also about the fact that the, the banking and financial experience is uh, uh, reflected in the composition of the management body of these institutions. Now, turning to the in slides, uh, in the next slides, uh, to, the, um, to the area of the structural organization, let me highlight the importance of uh, having in place the proper uh, credit risk approval and governance. Indeed, uh, this is uh, a quite important aspect. Uh, in, uh, in the initial phase of the, of the business of these uh, institutions, uh, um, fintech banks, uh, there, uh, there is a tendency of these institutions to, to use uh, outsource credit uh, scoring services uh, and, uh, or rely on alternative sources of data or sometimes making use also of alternative credit uh, uh, scoring uh, methods. And this is related to the fact that, particularly in the initial uh, phase uh, of their activity, uh, these institutions are, uh, are not able to uh, collect all the information related to the capability, to the repayment the capability of, the, of uh, their customers. Um, therefore, also in this case, there is a need from the supervisor authority to spend a lot of attention on specific aspects, uh, for instance, on the minimum data requirements, uh, on the feasibility of uh, in-house credit scoring uh, models uh, or the presence uh, in, of commensurate risk management and capital safeguards in case there is a, a use of alternative uh, data and credit scoring uh, methods by the financial, uh, uh, by the Fed, uh, fintech institutions. Um, still in the context of the structural organization, uh, the assessment of the information te technology related risk is uh, of course extremely important. And um, the ECB, as you know, has always spent uh, particular attention uh, to the cyber risk. But in this uh, case, we also refer to other related risks like outsourcing or uh, cloud outsourcing. 
Um, also in this case, there is a need from the supervisor authority to spend attention on aspects like, for instance, the possibility to have uh, access uh, or uh, contractual rights uh, to audit or uh, supervise, for instance, uh, outsources, uh, outsource activities. Now, moving to the last slide for concerning the FinTech Guide, uh, uh, let me briefly touch upon the supervisory considerations uh, in the area of uh, of the program of operations, uh, uh, sometimes referred to as a, a business plan, um, by saying that compared with, uh, with uh, traditional banks, uh, the business projections and the resulting capital requirements of uh, fintech uh, uh, institutions tend to have a greater level of uh, uh, uncertainty. And this relates to the fact that there is uh, the application by this bank of a new technology. And, um, and the, actually the implementation of the same business plan is uh, surrounded by general uncertainty. So in this context, the ECB and the national Compact authorities um, will assess uh, um, whether the, um, the applicants uh, can demonstrate that um, they are able to, to hold in reserve a sufficient capital uh, um, to cover startup losses uh, in the first three years of activities. In this context, uh, there is also a possibility envisaged by the, by the FinTech Guide. The National Compact Authority can ask uh, the FinTech uh, to prepare an exit plan, identifying uh, how uh, to unwind the voluntary, uh, the, the business, and uh, close down the, the bank uh, without imposing additional losses uh, to, uh, to depositors. So I think that uh, I can finish the conclude here with the, with the overview of the FinTech guy. I turn back to my colleague Sofia for the timeline of the current process. Thank you, Giacomo. Uh, so in the, in the slide 15, you have um, a brief description of the consultation process. Today we are having the, the public hearing. And as you know, uh, comments uh, can be sent and submitted still until the 2nd of November, when the public consultation will, will end. Um, and uh, uh, we expect to, to be able to publish the, the final guide um, close to the end of the year, by the 20th of uh, December. Um, you have in your um, documents uh, the link to the to to the information on the consultation process. So if you need more information, please uh, feel free to, to go there. And we are looking forward to receiving uh, your uh, written comments uh, because we take them, of course, uh, into account when uh, drafting the, the final uh, guides. And um, this is it. I think we will open now for, for, for questions. Uh, thanks, Sophia. So um, we are now... Um, at your disposal for questions. So if you have any, please raise your hands. We have um, microphones in the room so that you can um, can speak to everybody. Thank you. Um, just one question, perhaps, at the beginning. You that as well, the pre-application phase, you expect um, the applicant to talk to the NCA and to the ECB. Um, in my experience, or the NCA is more the, the first entry point and the touch point, so how to interpret this? Should we kind of, should an applicant get contact to you as well directly, or what do you expect? Um, in all processes, it, and our experience uh, shows that uh, we work very closely together with the, with the national competent authorities. So um, it's, it's on your discretion to approach uh, either uh, institution, because in the end, we will work together anyway. Um, what we usually do is, even if in the first exploratory meeting, uh, uh, the ECB is not present or the NCA, we will ensure that all information is shared and we will also ensure that, that if needed, uh, both entities are in those uh, meetings and will, of course, already look into any documentation that, that comes in in this pre-application phase. So cooperation is one of our key principles um, and we ensure that it uh, runs uh, smoothly. 
as a follow-up then, um, so within the application process, in my experience, it was partly so that more the NCA was driving the whole process, and then with the draft proposal, ECB come into, into the play a bit afterwards for the final decision making. So how is it in the future? Do you want to be more involved right from the beginning to make it more s even more smoother? Um, to make it uh, a bit more clear, um, whenever there is a, a, a formal uh, application that is submitted to the NCA, they are always the entry point, the ECB is also informed that there is an application uh, submitted. At that moment in, in time, there is an exchange, usually with the NCAs, and then, of course, it depends also on the specific uh, case. Uh, if the ECB feels the need to uh, immediately start assessing at the same time and discussing already with the NCAs, or uh, we could consider that the NCAs could start uh, uh, the assessment process and we would then ensure that uh, there, are some, uh, uh, there is some alignment uh, before. As you know, in the licensing uh, cases, which is quite exceptional in the, in the SSM uh, context, if the NCA considers that the EU or national requirements are not met, they can reject the application by themselves. So they don't need to submit um, uh, a proposal uh, to the ECB to, to reject. They can, they can immediately reject. Um, so um, if from the first assessment that is conducted, it is clear for the NCA that the, the requirements are not and will not be met, they can take that uh, decision uh, immediately. Um, our experience uh, uh, up to now is that the interaction um, is very, very good with, the, with, the, with, with all the NCAs, um, and the assessment process uh, goes very smoothly. Um, we have inter regular interactions with all NCAs on the processes that are ongoing. So. Um, if you have um, contacts with the NCAs, you should continue those, uh, those contacts, and internally we will align when the ECB needs to be uh, involved and how. The other way around would also work. Uh, if we are contacted, we will ensure that the NCA is always uh, informed and involved. But in these cases, as they are the entry point, it would make sense that the first uh, uh, approach is, uh, is the NCA. Uh, this is David Sanchez from Banco Santander. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation and thank you for the guys and, and thank you for making it in a public uh, procedure where we can give uh, you our comments. And I, I only have one question about um, if, if a already regulated bank uh, buy a vintage company, let's say 51% of a vintage company, to develop kind of activity that the bank already have a, li a license, um, that point uh, triggered the need of the, the need of applying for a new um, uh, application process for that. I mean, it's an activity that we already do, but now we buy a new company to develop a little bit this business activity. So the need for there is a trigger for a new application process for that? Maybe I can start and then yeah. Giacomo if you want to complement. Um, if this uh, entity is not a bank, so if the fintech company is not a bank and will develop banking activities, uh, that uh, um, encompasses the definition of a credit institution, then yes, this entity would need a new banking license, even if it's a subsidiary, if it would become a subsidiary of a bank that already has, of course, uh, the banking license to, to pursue those activities. So if it's a, a new entity, an entity that does not have a banking license and they will uh, start uh, developing new activities that are considered banking activities, then they would require a new uh, banking license. I don't know if you can already. Do you want to complement? No, that's yeah. no, I mean, uh, just to complement what uh, Sofia said, I mean, there are uh, 
different business models uh, uh, applied in the context of fintech. So, of course, there might be situations where there are already there are banks already in, uh, in place. Uh, there are uh, fully fledged virtual banks. Uh, uh, so there are several situations. I mean, the, the one that you mentioned doesn't trigger, of course, any, any licensing procedures uh, unless you are going, to, as uh, Sophia just said, to buy uh, a different uh, subsidiary or entity which is uh, uh, defined as a bank. So then in this case, of course, uh, this trigger uh, uh, a qualifying multi procedure. Do you mean that it doesn't make any difference the, the fact that is a bank or is any other uh, player who buy this fintech company. So the process will be exactly the same. I mean, the, this new entry will have to apply the whole process, the application process. So it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't make any difference that the, the parent company is a bank who already have that uh, license for that activity. Yes, if it's a different entity, so the licensing yeah. is per entity. If if it's a new entity that will start, because if it was already a fintech company, maybe what they do is not what uh, the a banking activity. So they do not uh, grant uh, uh, receive deposits or are the repayable funds, and they don't grant uh, credit on their own account. But if they start doing these activities, so if they start conducting banking activities they would require a banking license. When you say, is the process the same? Uh, the process might not be the same if, if the acquirer is a bank or not, because um, uh, as I was uh, mentioning, if, um, if uh, um, the shareholder is, is already a shareholder that is known to the, to the supervisors, uh, the assessment uh, is probably uh, faster and easier because we would already have all the information on our side. But the licensing, triggering a licensing process, yes, it would trigger even if it's a bank, bank buying one of these entities that will become a bank. Any other question? Thank you, my name is Jochen Kindermann from Simmons and Simmons. When we read the definition for fintech banks, we struggled a bit with the, with, with the comment um, that just relates to the question on technology-enabled innovation. I mean, currently, any kind of bank with which we work in a certain way de develops structures, acquires structures, which are very close and I would call and qualify as technology um, technology developing so in a nutshell for us this guide meant in a certain way that any kind of bank application also has to cover the particularities of this new guideline is, is that also your understanding or where do you draw the line between so to say normal bank and fintech bank mm -hmm. oh, thank you for uh, this question uh, uh, again let me say that there is no intention whatsoever to uh, to introduce new requirements with the fintech guide. So uh, there is only one general policy concerning the licensing and the assessment of the licensing application. Uh, that said, what uh, the fintech guide just complement the general policy. So indeed, uh, if uh, uh, there are banks uh, that have uh, specialized uh, uh, entities or units uh, in their own uh, uh, context or framework uh, and they, or potential banks that they're going to apply to receive a license in the context of the assessment of the, of the license for these banks, uh, uh, some of the aspects that uh, I just described before will be applied during the assessment of, by the supervisor authorities. So this is, I mean, uh, what we want to, uh, to do with this uh, FinTech guide is to, um, let's say, to uh, identify this um, special area of interest uh, from a supervisor perspective that deserve particular attention uh, when there is uh, a a high level of technology, uh, let's say, um, expressed in the structure of the bank. So in this case, of course, there is a need to spend attention to specific aspects. But otherwise, the, 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 the process is exactly the same. The assessment is exactly the same. Sophia, I don't know if you want to complement, but uh, this is a bit of the concept of the FinTech guide. Any other comment? Any other probably also comment on the question, what happens if a bank, like 
I would say, currently very common acquires, in this case, a tech firm, then you would probably come to the conclusion this now changes to a fintech bank, and that this kind of jump over a threshold, does this mean, is this a, an expansion, extension of the licensing? So does this mean I have to go through an additional process, or is this already included? So what, what's the process no, under these circumstances? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. This uh, certainly doesn't trigger a new uh, license uh, procedure per se, uh, unless, uh, unless the bank uh, was not supposed to uh, have a fully fledged license at the beginning. And this, uh, in this case, I mean, if there is an extension of, uh, of activities uh, and, uh, and this activity was not originally foreseen in the, in the banking license provided by the by the uh, supervisor authorities, then there is a, a need to have uh, a, an additional uh, request for a licensing procedure, or an extension of license. Um, we have to rely a lot on also on the national framework. In some uh, jurisdictions, uh, uh, there is not a possibility to have, uh, uh, and there is uh, no possibility to have, a, let's say, licenses that refer only to part of the activities. There are only fully fledged licenses provided to. Uh, to banks. In other jurisdictions, uh, on the contrary, there is a possibility to have uh, limited license in terms of uh, activities. And uh, if uh, we are referring to these jurisdictions, indeed, uh, and uh, we're referring to the case that you mentioned to before, then indeed uh, this would trigger the need to have uh, uh, to request an extension of the activity uh, with a new process for the licensing assessment. In this case, the fintech uh, fintech guide would apply, or at least the, the aspects related to the fintech guide would uh, would be considered by the supervisor authorities during the, the process. Thank you. Are there any further questions? At all? It seems as if the presentation was so complete that there are only very few questions. That's great. Yeah, thank you very much then. Thanks for coming. And um, uh, we're looking forward to receiving uh, your comments in writing if you, if you have any, if, you've, if you have already sent some, some questions and comments and uh, requests for cl um, clarifications in. Um, and yeah, looking forward to this and um, thank you very much again for coming.